can say after your girl. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, I'm here with someone today. This is the first episode of the Driven and Focus series. I wanted to do a series where I have women on here that inspire you guys to follow your dreams, go after your goals, because we're going to interview women who are powerful, who do amazing things. And if you hear all their credentials, you're just like, oh my god, that's awesome. But then you hear the back there and you're like, how is this possible? So that's what we're going to show on this series today. So we have Monique London here. She's the owner of London Ivy Products. An amazing hair care and body line. You have some dope stuff, you know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> but her backstory is crazy incredible, just so inspiring. And when I thought of this series, I was like, I gotta go to Toronto. Like, in Toronto, for a six, <laughs> what up? The six, the six. I have to go here and interview her. She was the first person that popped up in my head. So we came here today, literally, yes. to interview her. I'm a, I'm a party too, but to uh, okay. I know how to have fun too. Yes, <laughs> which is crazy to me. Okay, we're gonna get into the story. So first of all, explain a little bit about your line and just talk about your line first, and we'll talk about how you got started. So London Ivy Products is a natural and organic hair, bath, and beauty product line. So we cater to both men, women, and children. We offer everybody the opportunity to have naturally based ingredients with salon results. So you have the opportunity to have the best of what nature has to offer and get all of the amazing results with all the chemicals and the things that are there to help hinder yourself or gain dependencies on chemicals where your skin gets used to something. So mm -hmm. our products are meant to help you have the healthiest hair and the healthiest skin possible. And they're amazing products, you guys. Like, seriously, there's not... Thank you. I just whipped it up to my kitchen and I just put it out there. Like, literally amazing stuff. I've been using it now for about six months. Wow, yeah. yeah, it's been a it's been a minute. So now you have this amazing line. How did you get started? Boy. So Toronto, in case anyone didn't know, is in Canada, uh, in Ontario. And up here we do not have the same type of access stuff that our lovely counterparts on the States do or in the States, sorry. Mm -hmm. Um we have to travel to, say, Buffalo, which is the closest, to go oh, to right a Walmart or a Target in order to get to anything that's good. All the things that all you marvelous bloggers are talking about were like, oh, <laughs> that looks nice. Mm -mm, can't find that. Or it's like three times the price in our beauty stores. Yeah. So about 10 years ago is when I went natural and I started researching cosmetic chemistry, going through, because I'm just one of those nerds that's like, no, I gotta know exactly what. So I can figure it all out, going to naturopath courses and just like trying to figure out exactly what it is I could do and how I could use that for myself. Mm -hmm. And then about four years ago, we were called Curls with Care and we started off kind of like church and bazaars and all those things, you know, just here and there mm -hmm. on the little side hustler, kind of like, uh, you know, it's I'm gonna sell it. Like yeah. oh, oh, I'm not complaining, girl. Uh, okay. <laughs> I wouldn't have gotten here if I wasn't. Right, but right. It's still that space. If you just had to start somewhere, right? So it's kind of like, all right, I'm gonna do it. Friends were asking, oh, can I have it? Then a couple of friends started handing me money, being like, mm -hmm. you're paying for this stuff. Like, mm -hmm. here's a little bit. And I was like, oh. Nice. Well, then. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Maybe I can. I can do something with this. Mm -hmm. So that's where it came to play. And then London Ivy now, as the name changes, because I had my daughter last year. Mm -hmm. um, and I named her after myself, because as you said, Monique London, mm -hmm. and my grandmother, Ivy. So it was just kind of, yay, and the brand and changed, and I'm happy. <laughs> okay. So you mentioned you have a daughter. Yes. Okay. And you're also in school. Uh, Part-time. Okay. Par yes. But you're in school. Yes. Okay. <laughs> that's... I'm in school before I'm like it. <laughs> I know, right? Regardless of whether it's part time, it's can't, still like, hard. I can't give up school. I yeah. went to undergrad, then post grad, and post grad again, and then now okay. uh, I wanted to be in my master's program. I had applied, got accepted, but then I had the baby. Right. A beautiful, wonderful gift. Mm -hmm. But you know, put it off. So I'm just taking extra post grad courses now, so mm -hmm. that I can re up myself and get into my master's program again after. Okay. So you have a baby. Yes. You're in school. Yes. And you have a full line. Yes. How and are another you? Hustle. And <laughs> another hustle. Yeah. Oh, and she does events too. <laughs> yes. So how are you able to do all of this? Because when I hear that, I'm just like, my brain just shuts down. By not sleeping. But uh, you really have to have a team behind you that not only supports you, but truly loves you. That's okay. there to make sure that 
your best interests are at heart. So that's from the simplest things of people, some of my friends bringing food to an event that I'm doing if I'm hustling and vending and or you have my partner taking care of the baby and rushing from work to take her so that I can rush to go do something and being there and at night time she's still breastfed but he would take the time to make sure that you know if he can hold her or cuddle her just a little bit longer mm -hmm. so I can get that last thing done. It's that type of caring that allows you the opportunity to try and okay. it's trying that then helps you potentially succeed so. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So what about what advice would you give to someone who doesn't have a team? If they don't have a a partner who's supportive but they still wanna go after their dreams, they don't have a friend who's supportive, like someone who doesn't necessarily have a team, what would you say to them or do you have any advice on how to get a team? Well, I will say that I have the team now, but I started Curls with Care when it was called that before, before I had my partner. So that okay. was still on me. But I do, I must admit that my mother is still like, hi mom, <laughs> the, best, the best person in the world. So um, I would still say though, starting. Starting is the most important thing possible. It doesn't matter if it's just you in your kitchen, doing what you gotta do, but when I say in your kitchen, that's like following all the health protocols, doing everything right, making sure things are centered, all that jazz. Mm -hmm. But it's just saying start, mm -hmm. get something started. And you may not have the friends that are gonna be in your corner to bring you food, but they might buy something if you can show them that it works, do some demos, teach people. It doesn't even have to be a hair product line. Right. If your hustle is maybe consulting, do maybe that first consulting for free. Show them that you can bring them to from 1,000 followers to 10,000 followers. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that all your work should be free. Right. Let's be real here. Right. It's not, not every opportunity to do pro bono work is going to be an advancement for you. Right. But you have to discern that moment. Absolutely. Find out Absolutely. exactly what it is that's going to be, hey, I can learn something from this. Maybe this consulting for somebody that's in a field you don't normally do, but now that's an opportunity for you to say, hey, I don't only consult for, say, business, I also now do healthcare, right. or I also do this. And this is an opportunity for you to continue to grow, mm -hmm. to meet people, and go to as many free educational workshops that your city provides as possible. That's great. Advice. It sucks that some of them are in the daytime, but every once in a while, taking that day off, the morning off, because half of the time they're just like a couple hours in right. the morning, mm -hmm. and going to this to find out where your grants are, where your research are, where all these little things and nits that can just propel you as an individual working. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier when you're on your own sometimes because you don't have to adhere to anybody. I don't have to worry about coming home to somebody and making sure food's ready and things mm -hmm. are done and house is clean when mm -hmm. you are just a single person. So yeah. it's harder because you are a single person. And you can but work till you're like literally It's your dead schedule, your mind. time. You're not yeah. worried about people, especially if you don't have kids and stuff. You just got the opportunity to just hustle. Yeah. Hustle until you're tired, break, eat, and hustle again. Right, right, so. right. Okay. So with that being said, when you did get your team together and you started getting more and more orders and everything, when did you realize, like when, at what point did you say, okay, I'm successful? Because sometimes when you start, it can be very slow. And I always ask people, how long are you going to give yourself to, to say, okay, this is successful? Because sometimes it takes years until something is successful or you get that big break. So how long did you give yourself to say like, okay, I'm going to give it to this point until I'm successful or then I'm going to walk away from it? Or did you just say, I'm just going to keep this going? Hmm. That is a very good question. Mm -hmm. I would say though, I wouldn't consider myself successful. I've had a lot of people tell me that through like all the workshops and things I do, but I still haven't hit at that point. I have like a kind of deadline for the amount of stores that I want to be in in a certain time frame and that will come into next year mm -hmm. but in terms of the level where I said I'm going to give up or not give up actually was right when she was born but then that was kind of I was like oh maybe I'll stop after she's done you know whatever and just kind of go back to the event stuff and leave it alone but it was just this thing literally that night I was on my phone mm -hmm. registered the business under that new name did everything because I was just like I can't like there needs to be a legacy of something that's great and it's not to say that children are the only opportunity for you to find a reason to have a legacy right. but it was just for me mm -hmm. so it was in that moment that I was like and the hustle came real where it went from being just you know I kind of do this to I want to do this and that's where getting into stores and meeting all types of people and going out there and 
pushing and having all types of bloggers and bloggers and like <laughs> it's just things have gone like a complete 180 the name change also was really important i realized mm -hmm. just because it allowed us to open up what we were doing because we were kind of stuck with hair care yeah alone. with the curls nice. yes mm -hmm. and while i was already doing skincare but i wasn't able to label it in the same way because it's like oh who wants the curls of care stuff yeah right? curls of care can like, you body cream. <laughs> like, what girl what, who, what? <laughs> and you're kind of also stuck in just curly haired people exactly and so yeah it was that was a very 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 important moment for me so yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, you also mentioned that you don't sleep. But we all know, like, I was there too with the whole hustle thing. And I think Erica Badu started this team, like, Team No Sleep or something like that. And I was up at 4 o'clock in the morning, like, yeah, Team No Sleep. I gotta get this video up. I gotta edit. Like, right? crazy, right? But then you crash hard. And it's, like, hard for you to get back <laughs> onto it after just Team No Sleep for, like, a week. Oh. Like, you just mentally. Sometimes you've been, like, three days and you're like, girl. Yeah. But, sorry, my face was not cute. But <laughs> there's moments where you're just like, it's, it. it's real. So it's like, yeah, we always say I don't sleep. But how do you actually give yourself time to actually eat? Like cook a meal or, mm. you know, like what is your process in that? Do you have a schedule where it's like at 9.30 I'll do this, at 10.30 I'll do this? Or do you just kind of go with the day as it just comes naturally or... Okay, so the event girl in me it plans everything out down to the minute. I know exactly what and everything, all the times, where it's going, who's going. And then the baby in my life doesn't agree with that. Right. So as much as I may set a schedule saying, okay, we're going to get up at this time, we're going to get this much done, play with you, do all this building, like baby things, and then go into trying to do some work, doesn't always quite work out that way. So right. I try to have a schedule so I at least know what I need to do, even if I don't get to it. So that then if it goes in the next day, I'm not kind of like, oh my gosh, what's left? What's going on? And any of that type of stuff. And there are certain deadlines that are slightly more important. So like shipping things out, it has to be out by five if I want it to leave that day. So mm -hmm. that's something where no matter how hectic things are, I still have to do that. But when it comes to food now, um, something that I found online right before the baby was freezer meals. Mm -hmm. And that has become like a big deal so there'll be like say once a month where I actually like throw down with like make as much of the prep type stuff and my partner's a vegan so like very oh, particular God. type prep yeah. type stuff so it's just a lot of that to help push through so there's sometimes we're like I haven't slept so what cook what stand what heat <laughs> so <laughs> it's like oven freezer meal right then there's other meals that are a lot easier to kind of prep just go so I've also learned in the last month to start prepping up the vegetables in my fridge. That helps that, a lot. That has been a big deal. Mm -hmm. I haven't fully gotten into that lifestyle, <laughs> but the days that I do, I'm excited about because mm -hmm. <laughs> you open the fridge and you're not like, oh, exactly. I gotta like, cut that what? up. It's just like, boom, boom. One, 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 and like you actually eat things that end up molding in your crisper because you forget they're down there. So, yes. Yeah. It's been that transition from also the fast food and things that I was just on the hustle or you're on the road, oh, you got to go to this supplier, mm -hmm. do this, do mm -hmm. this test or drop out. Like, you're constantly picking up things and not eating as well as you should be. So right. first, my transition has been getting all the healthier options out of my takeout version, and then it's kind of shifted okay. into the prep meals. And the sleep itself, really, I say I don't sleep, but it's because I don't sleep as well as I know I should. Right. Because you kind of catch sleep. Yeah. So most of my primary work time is at night. So there's like little naps sometimes between doing something. And then I generally try to go to bed before four. It doesn't always happen. But four is my like tell myself cutoff time because the baby's up again by like 7.30. Oh so it's. And I get up at four. <laughs> I can't even imagine like going to bed at four. God. And getting up before. at 7.30. Like almost every day. Jesus. So you get like. Three hours three of and a half. for sure sleep, yeah. and then the rest is just like I might get. Half and I hour. say that, but then there's like five o'clock, five thirty is when she's waking up for bread. Like it's like for poopy. <laughs> yes, for booby meals. Right? <laughs> so it's like uh, not quite a uh, like complete sleep, which would be nice. So then there's yeah. like the random when I'm not already vending crash time where partner is like the best in the world because yeah. if she gets up, all I gotta do is be like, babe, <laughs> like. You get her, is, and then really I get nice. to sleep in for a little bit. Yeah. It may only be an hour, but when it's an hour of non-interrupted sleep, it's everything. It feels like what ten years to you? Uh, <laughs> people are like, "Oh, I look so young." I'm like, 
Thanks. <laughs> I wish I can only imagine what younger could look if I were sleeping. Oh, Lord. <laughs> let's not let's not go there. Anywho, so what advice would you give to someone who is thinking about starting their own business? Is scared because they have so much on their plate, but they really know that they want to do it, but they're just scared of taking that step. What advice would you give them? I think the biggest part is to be true to yourself, to know your truth. Because if you can sit down, figure out exactly what you want to do, what is best for you, you can make that happen because you know what to do for that. So if it means maybe waking up half an hour earlier, if it means going to bed a little later, or even changing your lifestyle, coming home a little earlier, not stopping out or sacrificing a little bit of date time or friend time, and giving yourself the opportunity to just start. Business plans are important depending on what type of business you're starting, but even if you don't have a formal business plan, Start doing some cost analysis, figure out exactly what it is, how much it will cost you and stuff like that so that you can work your way up to it. Not everything has to be like zero to a hundred. Right. You can just little increments. So you say you want to start, I don't even know, say even not hair care line, you say you want to start it, first step, come up with a name. Right. Right? Like mm -hmm. you're, that, that's assuming you already know what type of products, you already have a mix. Well, start with a name. Mm -hmm. Now that you have a name, get a logo. Mm -hmm. Now that's a task. You've completed that. Go from that. And even any business that still works for you, come right. up with a name. Get a logo. It's very important to have a logo and a favicon so that you can have them separate. Mm -hmm. Buy the domain for that now that you have that name. Yeah. And scoop up every handle on any social media thing that you think you want. So Twitter, Instagram, Periscope, I don't even know them all now, but find oh it, God. get on Snapchat. it, and keep it. You don't have to post nothing. Just get just it make sure, so that somebody nobody else, else don't pick it up from you. Because yeah. I see it happen to people all the time. Yeah. Where they plan their business name and then somebody else, when you go to type it in, you're like, uh. Taken. You know, that's not Shelly's jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, that's really important. Yes. Anything else you want to say to inspiring entrepreneurs out there? To start. Especially just start, yeah. women of color. Please just start. It's beyond even all the things in the hype that's having of financial freedom. Yes, that's great. But there's something about having something that's yours, that you can just work on, is essentially your baby that's just there. Even if it doesn't become, not everyone's going to be, say, L'Oreal that's in my space or something else. But right. you can have a space that's yours. Exactly. And own it. Yes. You can have loyal, I have some people where like, they're like family, like customers that are like, hey, I see you, I know, and they get all the special treats and stuff in their bags. Like, they are <laughs> the people, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of like you just got to make your way through. And also, any of the introverts, maybe take a class in public speaking. Toastmasters and stuff like that are out there to just help you become more comfortable meeting people because people are the key to any business. So that is the most, if you got a stank attitude, just kind of start working on that. <laughs> but some it. people don't know they have a stank attitude, but I think you that's a whole out. other conversation. <laughs> you will find out fast. So. Well, that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much for being <laughs> on this series of mine. This is the first thank episode. Thank you for having me. So I hope you guys, look, I will have all of her social media. Do you, can, do you shan't mind having your email address down there? Oh, as no, well? it's on there. Info at LondonIronProducts.com. Okay. okay, yeah. If you guys have a question, like, reach out to her. Yes. First of all, she's awesome. Like, you see how she, this is how she is in real life. we about to hang out afterwards, okay? She is cool <laughs> as heck. I don't want to cuss on this like, series, but. <laughs> Y'all know me. Okay. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this series. I hope you guys enjoy the episodes to come. They're only going to get better. This is my first one, so don't don't be too hard on me. I know or me, you know, just you look great. Do you see this? We didn't get we didn't have a talk about outfits because she looks so amazing and I'm up here in just like a t shirt I got from Target. I had to show up, eh? I don't do makeup. This is just my skin, no foundation, so it's kinda <laughs> like I had to show up with the clothes. At least something. So. She just she just had to be like, this is my amazing skin. Get my product and you can have skin <laughs> like me. But anywho, we will talk to you guys. Well, I will talk to you guys in the next episode. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Have a great day. Bye.